Thanks for staying with us. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and it's time to go to the papers and see what the papers are saying this morning. Uh, joining us to discuss uh, some of these headlines is Mr. Tunde Kolaole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Uh, we're starting this morning with the Business NG, and uh, the leading headline here is saying United. Oh, sorry. Nigeria, or Naira rather, crude oil sales to Dangote local refineries begin October 1. That's according to the federal government. We've seen also another headline which says that uh, the local, uh, the, the marketers are not comfortable with this directive that they must sell in Naira to Dangote. But we'd like to hear your comment on this. We're expecting the rollout of... Um, of uh, petrol from Dangote refinery in September, which means anything that he's going to process right now to that October 1 will be bought in dollars and maybe imported as well. So let me hear your comment on this directive. Not to be uh, very blunt, I will say that most of those things that you are seeing in some of these newspapers are propaganda, are propaganda stores that have been put in there and suspected by the authorities for some of these security agencies. Like I have said before on your program, there is no way uh, the NNPC or whatever they call themselves can supply them to tell uh, crude petroleum products for its refineries in Naira. Furthermore, the NNPC is never likely to have sufficient uh, crude petroleum <coughs> to supply to them what they and all the other all the other refineries that are springing up um, in Nigeria. In the first instance, most of the refineries that have been built today were not built with altruistic uh, motives. Most of them had licenses a long time ago to build those refineries. So because they were getting fuel subsidies, none of which is a cheap money, none of them was ready to 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 to, to uh, kind of uh, establish a, a refinery. Now. One of the reasons why Dangote, why petroleum or crude product cannot be sold in dollar, I mean in Naira, to the local refinery is very, very simple. Crude uh, petroleum are uh, denominated in dollars and what have you. There's an international market that they are sold. If you now say you are going to be selling to the local refinery in Naira and all that, you are in a way subsidizing those local refineries. And if you have said that you're never going to be giving subsidy to anybody in here, whether they be manufacturers or the ordinary citizens of the country, then you would have been eating your format. It's never going to happen. And you must also remember that most of the inputs into producing crude petroleum and all that are dollar denominated. The equipment, the chemicals, the workforce, and what have you. So if you are selling to Dangote and the other local refineries in Naira, how will you be able to get sufficient uh, foreign exchange to be able to import all the inputs and all the raw materials? that we used to produce a good petroleum product. Furthermore, we must not forget that the level of stealing of crude petroleum products in the Niger Delta, where this uh, petroleum is being produced, is very, very high. There's also insecurity in those places and what have you. Such that, ordinarily, Nigeria should be producing less than about 3 uh, million pounds or there about per day and all that. But look at what we are producing today. I think it's just a little bit above a one ton, I mean, above a one million barrel or two million barrel, a barrel a day and all that. So Nigerians should not let anybody take them for a ride or um, mislead them. Or they shouldn't get hooked to the propaganda of, uh, of, of the government. Good oil is never going to be sufficient to give to the local refineries, and it's never likely to sell in Naira. And if it sells in Naira, that means we have gone back to the subsidy regime. And when you go back to the subsidy regime and all that, it's going to hurt the economy. It is also going to hurt the individual. And all that, people will have said we want to shut away from making unmerited profit. We again begin to make those unmerited profits. And once you begin to give subsidy and what have you, most of the local refineries that have been established today will also die a natural death. But we are still paying sub subsidies, so mm -hmm. are we running away from that? What is it? What is better? Should we pay subsidy while this product is coming from this product is coming from outside Nigeria, or we should pay subsidy while uh, the product is coming from within Nigeria? The money remains here, as far as I, I think, anyway. 
Uh, I don't know what, what uh, the real thing by the experts would be. But I'm thinking that uh, the money remains here if you're paying subsidy within Nigeria for anything that you're doing. So subsidy is still there. In fact, we, we had a situation where the federal government said the um, money accrued to the federal government coffers from the NNPC should be uh, turned into subsidy payment, which was a sly way of uh, admitting that the subsidy payment is still going on, even though the federal government is still denying it after making that statement because they, took, they talk from <coughs> both sides of the mouth. Yeah, I think the reason why they are talking about subsidy now is because of the value of the Naira. Because when you are going to import those uh, food, uh, I mean, uh, the refined products and what have you, you are going to buy them in dollars and what have you. And as long as the, the value of the Naira keeps falling, Government would have to supplement, government would have to, 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 to ensure that those products are coming. Those who import those products and what have you are never likely to be able to meet up with the rate at which the Naira is falling in the international market and the rate at which the dollar is rising. So, government have to bridge the gap. That might be the reason why they have not put their also been set to start giving subsidy, I think, to the NNPC or whoever is importing these things. Have to be able to build or to bring the local product. If they don't do that, those who import the product will stop importing. And if they stop importing, there won't be enough or sufficient petroleum uh, 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 products in the pumping stations and water. And when there is none, the economy is going to be crippled. So we are in the car 22 or whatever they call it. We are between the devil and the deep blue sea. And we are going to get out of this. We need to think out of the box. But the problem is not unsolvable. We can solve the problem if only there's going to be the political will transparency and accountability across board. So, for example, if the local refineries have been working and you are producing them internally and you are producing refined products internally and other, the cost of production would have come down. And when the cost of production comes down, then you are able to sell the refined products uh, cheaper than what are going to be imported from abroad. After all, look, the food is being imported from matter today. They are not the best of uh, petroleum products and what have you. But the Nigerian people have been using them. And then those who are importing this oil are making double profits across, um, across both. Our problem really is lack of a political will, lack of accountability, and lack of uh, transparency and what have you. Uh, too many times people have been saying that you have to unbundle the BA must call the NNPC. Rather than unbundling the they are turning into private limited liability companies. And as a private limited liability company, are they behaving like a private limited liability company? All that they used to do when they were a state uh, 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 company, and also what they have continued to do when they have now been re-denominated as a private limited liability company. Nothing has uh, really changed uh, more at all. The Nigerian airlines are just uh, a bunch of people, very, very unpetrolled people. And uh, they need to reflect on these things. I would have thought that the uprising, the end start uprising, the protest against hunger and all that would have taught the Nigerian airline a lot of lessons. And what is happening in the different parts of the world? Look at Bangladesh, look at Kenya, look at Uganda, and look at some of these other places. Today, massive, massive uh, demonstrations is going on in, uh, in uh, India because of the poor funding of the health uh, uh, sector. This should be things that should guide our airlines as regards uh, what they are supposed to be doing. Not just with the economy, but the way Amala they handle the welfare of the whole Nigerian people. Okay. Um, let, let, let's go to some uh, legal matters. Uh, Kogi, produce yourself for arraignment, appeal court, orders Yahaya Bello. Um, I'm, sh I'm shocked that till now we've not uh, heard that the police has been able to arrest him or <coughs> they have been able to get him to appear in court and he's still roaming free within Nigeria. I'm sure it's still in Nigeria, and uh, uh, we've not heard much about it. But this is what they're saying. Produce yourself for arraignment. Appeal, appeal court orders Yahaya Bello. I don't know. Hey. What if he doesn't come? What happens? All right. Um, ordinarily, when um, a police, for example, invites a citizen that's supposed to, to honor whatever invitations are given to you, when there is also a matter in court and the court has said, look, uh, come before the court to defend yourself, it doesn't mean that the court to court judgment is going to be delivered that day, or that the court will crucify you without hearing the whole side of the story and what have you. 
So the last thing that they are to really defend yourself, if you think you do have a defense. But sometimes too, we have to be very careful in the way and manner the law is, uh, is, uh, is applied. The man has filed all manners of uh, applications and court, trying to restrain the court or trying to restrain the prosecutor from really prosecuting. And those papers that they are filed in court and water, they have been thrown throughout, I mean, through the whole gamut of our law, of, our, of our, the means of law in Nigeria. Those cases that they are trying to see go to the Supreme Court. And at the Supreme Court, we really cannot determine. But for me, for example, you get to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court now gives a ruling or a judgment that um, uh, the prosecutor has, uh, uh, doesn't have the judicial whatever to prosecute or the, or the ESCC doesn't have the power to prosecute it, or whatever they say they are prosecuting for another. What is going to happen? So it is because of that, I would have prepared a situation that they should allow Yayabelo to exhaust himself. And after you have exhausted himself and murder, he can only be picked up any time and then you're prosecuted. And what he's doing today is going to count against him because it will be difficult when he now surrenders himself or when the police or the APC is able to locate him or fish him up and bring him before the court. It will be difficult for him to argue for a day, I mean, to argue for pay, and then the court to grant because he would have been seen as a flight at risk. They might be refusing him or uh, pay. So for these reasons I know that I would prefer, just like I said, let the Ayatollah really exhaust whatever he wants to do. Because ultimately time doesn't run out for criminal matters. If the Ayatollah really is arrested he only the to come, he could still be prosecuted for this infraction that we are talking about. Because what we are doing today, we are kind of uh, discreting uh, these uh, public institutions and all that. And making a money out of a movie and making a hero. Of, uh, of, 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 of the suspect. We ordinarily shouldn't uh, be done. And look at the number of lawyers who have also applied to withdraw from these cases and all that. Because in the process, if they are not careful, their own names might also be smeared uh, and war abroad. So if the law allows him to contest whatever prosecution, whatever um, uh, cases anybody would have filed against him. And uh, look at what Donald Trump himself is also doing in the U.S. in some of those cases and what happened. So, we let the patient, uh, time is uh, not of the essence really in there, even though I do not realize that justice delay is justice denied. Okay. <clears throat> Let's move to the Punch newspaper. We're not starting with the leading headline. We're going to a small headline, top right corner. Akume Edun, lead local government autonomy implementation panel. This panel has been set by the federal government to make sure that the judgment of, uh, is it June or July 11th, uh, is, uh, is carried out to the letter. So this uh, committee has been set by the federal government and is being led by the secretary uh, to the federation and uh, other people. So what do you think about that? Well, I, I doubt it whether this so-called local government, I mean, this uh, judgment of uh, the Supreme Court, uh, whether the whether the federal government will be able to enforce it uh, for so many uh, reasons and what I know. Those who are supposed to enforce this law themselves, they, they hands themselves, they are all hands too, are not uh, uh, very, very uh, clean. And most of the states, where they are dominant and not, they do allow the local government to run free or to be accounted for whatever resources is put in their hands, the answer is no. But more importantly, the fundamental issue is this. So long as um, the government that is uh, uh, at the head, at the state level, continue to win all the local government when the leaders are conducted conduct in those places and all that, or if you render not guilty or unaffordable, whatever union or judgment the Supreme Court may have been able to, uh, to, to deliver in this matter, because the same will pay to the part as the city. If the government still have their host, or me is able to become local government chairman and councillors and mother, they will remain there for them. And they will merely invest some other ways and means of diverting the resources of the local government uh, into their own cover or into the covers of the of, of, of the state uh, government. So the fundamental thing, the fundamental thing that should have been done really to grant autonomy to the local government, which I do know that the the country already gave to them, is to ensure that whatever elections are conducted and they are the local, for the local government chairman and cadre and all that, are free out there. And then anybody who the people want to elect and all that are freely uh, uh, voted for. If you are able to ensure that we might be able to enforce 
the independence of the local court. I mean, we will be able to enforce the judgment of the Supreme Court and then to also be able to establish the independence of the local court. And to have relayed that foundation, whatever judgment the Supreme Court may be, I mean, they are given another, it will be very, very critical to enforce because uh, those who are supposed to enforce this uh, judgment are themselves beneficiary of the liquidity that is happening at the local government level. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I was just asking myself whether the provisions of the Constitution were not enough, that we needed a panel to be set again before these things can be done properly. And uh, knowing we that... We don't uh, even need a panel. Mm, yeah, so knowing, panel knowing, knowing that even some panel. state governments when have set the, committees... Once the judgment is passed on, the people are affected and know that. They are supposed to obey the judgment of the court. But you see, our allies obey judgment only when it is everybody good to death. Once it is not available to them, they find a way to circumvent it. What instrument is the federal government or is the, is the secretary of government not going to be using to enforce whatever readings or judgment the Supreme Court may have, uh, have given with regard to local government economy? And uh, we also look at the constitution and what I mean. There is a lot of uh, confusion with regard to the local government economy. In one hand, the constitution says the local government are independent and they should be allowed to run freely and what have you. In some other sections of the constitution, the local government has assumed to the wins and capacities of the state and government or of the state. So we also will require to amend the Nigerian constitution to be able to grant or to be able to ensure the independence of the local government. Until that is done, the judgment of the Supreme Court will be very, very difficult to, 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 to enforce. Mm, because I was going to ask about that. Uh, is this... Is this uh, um, activity just futile because uh, if the constitution still pronounces one thing to be uh, what is supposed to be done, I don't know how yeah, this is going to work without the constitution being amended. Uh, but that means you are you are suggesting that the constitution should be amended first before all these committees and everything they're talking about. Maybe then they'll need to pay arrears after that to local government. Yes, I would have preferred that. I would have preferred that. Mm. I would also have preferred that we have. Uh, uh, maybe I next should be conducting elections at the at the at the local government level to ensure that uh, people can freely contest elections in those places and also win those elections. And uh, alternatively, the INEC uh, at the state level should be composed by all the political parties that wish to contest elections at the local government level. They must have uh, they must be members of. Um, of the eye of uh, the electoral committee mm. at the state, I mean, at the state uh, level, and also to ensure independence and all that. All things like the human rights organization, the religious uh, organizations, and all that. To also be a member of that uh, body. The states will, state will only have uh, uh, a few members who cannot use their numerical priority as a member of uh, uh, the, the, the board in there to so overturn whatever decision the entire house uh, would have loved to take. With regard to whatever election might be holding at the local government, uh, at the local government level. Okay. Um, another headline, a small headline down here, 2027, uh, still on the Punch newspaper. 2027, APC kicks as PDP backs call for Jonathan's return. And there's been some uh, calls. Uh, there have been some calls that uh, the former president, good luck, Jonathan, should return. And uh, we all know that if he returns, uh, when he returns. Uh, whatever the, 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 the term will be, um, he will only serve one term. And this, the mm. argument of these people is that, okay, if we're tired with uh, the current uh, government and we want a change of government, it would be unfair for us to bring someone who will have to stay for, uh, maybe want to stay for two tenors, uh, since he's supposed to return to another geopolitical zone in our country. And some people were saying, that uh, Jonathan and what he did was far better than uh, the last two administrations we've had after him and so many other things. So now that the PDP is trying to back this call by some people, not necessarily PDP, the APC is kicking against it, uh, and I don't know whether that should be their concern. Well, um, under our law, uh, Dr. Goodlock Jonathan is entitled to at least uh, two pounds uh, or four years uh -huh. as president. He has done only four years, with, uh, one time and all that. So if we take cognizance of that, we could say um, he could exercise his right 
to return to power as a, as a president. But the question would be, would we have the way we are to be able to do that? Will we be able to muster the resources? Will we have also a political platform on that we can to run the PBB on that we can go for Nigeria? He is now in Taka. Uh, that party is no longer as cohesive as it used to be. You must also realize that um, Dr. Gugan Sonata didn't win on his own five months. He didn't win on his own five months. He had a very strong backing from people like uh, 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 former President Richard Bonobato and a few strong um, uh, big shots in the PPP. Some of those big shots that they supported at that period in time uh, uh, when they won the election and became president are to be themselves in the presidency. So I wouldn't think that they will easily surrender the presidency to him. And then again, um, part of the reasons I think people are clamoring for the son is that uh, in a way to be fair to him, he will he has a lot of respect for fundamental human rights. And we didn't have too much bloodshed or too much killing uh, the way we are having it when he was um, Mr. President. And he also uh, would have noted some of them have been made about him. He was one president who elected somebody or who appointed somebody he didn't know as I make a chairman. He also brought in this uh, single treasury um, accounting procedures and order in order to fight corruption. There were a few revolutions that Dr. Guno Tunetan brought onto the table and war at all. But uh, he had his own witnesses as a president. I'm not too sure that with the challenges that we have in our hands today, that Dr. Gulo Jonathan will be the most suitable person to pilot the affairs of the, of the state. He yeah. may not have the political will to do what is necessary. Well, between the devil and the deep blue sea, we don't know how that's going to be. But um, uh, my, only, my only concern is why the APC will be worried about it. Because I thought they should be very happy when he comes and with all the things that you have said that uh, are against him, that it should be just a walkover. But they're the ones complaining now that they shouldn't even think about bringing Dr. Goodluck Jonathan in. That's why I, I was think just... they want to humor him. I think they want to humor him. You will recollect that these last elections are not that. For people who probably wanted to, 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 to spend this money that they think he has start somewhere, uh, we are trying to mislead him to come and contest on the platform of the APC. And it was even said to have gone to the APC headquarters to meet some officials in there, trying to negotiate his route as regards getting the ticket uh, of the APC and all that. They, they, they shouldn't succumb to, to this excuse that is being played before him. They just want to ridicule him. And, uh, and they take his, uh, his money. Our allies are an ingenious people. They always find ways and means to live where they have not shown. Okay, let's see how it goes. Uh, 2027 will be really, really interesting. But this is where we draw the curtain on this segment, uh, Mr. Kolawole. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thanks for having me. Mm. Have a lovely day. You too. The streets are wet now, there is drizzle. So you have a day. <laughs>